the, in the industry and, and in, the, in, the, in, the, in the global environment, there's a larger stakeholder group. If you're working in a large mining company or large oil and gas company, and that stakeholder group is the earth. Um, we know there's a problem with carbon. I'm not one of those carbon deniers. Um, I, I do believe that the effect of human activity, first of all, it's more complex than many people would believe, but it's a combination of carbon, it's a combination of particulate pollution and other gases, and it's a, car, it's a combination of the high, high, um, high upper atmosphere layer of dust which is being created by human activities. These are all having some effect on the climate of the Earth. These are not going to have an effect that is measurable overnight, but measurable within the course of your own personal careers. While this thing is increasing by a billion times, potentially the CO2 levels in, in, on Earth will drive global temperatures above 2.5 degrees centigrade, which means that hot arid parts of the world will get more hot and more arid, including in Africa, and wet areas of the world will become even more wet, including catastrophically wet in the future. So there's going to be a huge, huge effect on all mankind from that. That's not just the effect of the mining industry. That's not just the effect of the oil and gas industry. That's the effect of everyone that's driving a car. That's the effect of everyone that's got an air conditioner in their, in their home or apartment. That's the effect of everyone that's using a free refrigerator. Anyone that's consuming electricity, anyone producing electricity, all has a part to play. It's not going to be an easy solution, uh, and it's not going to be something that's going to, be, going to be solved overnight, but it's something that we have to actually begin confronting, and certainly uh, that, you know, uh, if, if, if you're in a, in a leadership position in a company or a country, you have to become more and more aware of your own contribution, both the problem and the solution. The second area is biodiversity. And I do want to emphasize that this is not just warm and fuzzy creatures, but this is actually uh, uh, avoiding further growth of what is one of the largest extermination events the Earth has seen for several millennium, for probably a half million years. And we, we have now quite a number of species disappearing. And you'll say, well, well that's, that's, that's bad from a world perspective. What does it mean for a mining company? Why do you care? Well, what happens now increasingly is you try to develop a new project. New species in the surveys get identified. And those new species, unless you can be seen to have strong biodiversity credentials, they actually can stop a project. They can stop a new business. So again, what, this is actually a defensive part of the overall sustainable development agenda that one has to have so that they're actually better positioned to get that project they want to get developed. And again, there will be more projects developed in the Copper Belt. There will be more copper found in the Copper Belt. There will probably be more deposits found elsewhere in Zambia. And again, biodiversity can either be in the way of those projects or they can enable those projects. So again, these are quite large concentric circles. And I'm just making a point about this because it used to be to run a mining company, you had to be a mining engineer. Now to run a mining company, you actually have to have just as good an ability to engage with the markets and to engage with stakeholders. And I would say that people in this room, if you've taken classic economic courses or you've taken classic engineering courses and you, and you actually put yourself in a position where I want to learn more every year, I, I, whether I'm in school or whether I'm in a career, you're actually well positioned for one of those top roles in industry or government. So look, for me, it's really an exciting part. I hope they come up with some medical technology that means I can easily live and thrive and run around the block at 50 years from now, um, because I really like the way the world is moving. It's, it's daunting, some of the challenges, but you know, there's actually going to be, for, for, for your careers, you're going to have some real, real opportunities to see something neat in the future. Thank you very much.